my friends today i want to work on a sample fem analysis one of the exciting thing about freecad uh, where i can do a fem analysis on select models every now and then today i want to start working on that uh, with a fair warning i am not an expert in fem analysis I know how to interpret it, I know what it says, but there are some tiny little things that I have not gained expertise on yet. So with that, let's go ahead and with this simple object, explain what FEM analysis is. After that, I want to get my hands on a little bit more complex object. Uh, in today's video so i'll be real quick on this model so what it says is this is kind of they attached to a building or something and then this beam is extending at the end there is nothing uh, to support this beam so all the support is coming from this here so like if you are hanging a bookshelf or something this is the wall and this is the shelf um, and that is called technically cantilever so i built model cantilever and i want to pull that up by say 25 that's my model structure i want to do a little bit of fem analysis uh, on this one that way i can explain what i am expecting from the final object let's go ahead and open up fem Workbench. WebFM Workbench comes with the free kit, but if it is not there, um, you can install that from Tools and go to Add-on Manager, and then search for FEM and install it. First thing first, as I said, uh, there are some sequential order of works that I'll have to do. First thing is to add an analysis. Now this is active it is not double click on it and it will be active and then add a solver there so if you expand this you see that the solver is there secondly we will have to add a material so on, we have plenty of materials here i am going with aluminum on this case generic aluminum and then i will have to decide which end of this object is a support so i'm going to go with constraint fixed here and then add i'm going to say because it was a wall so i'm going to say this is my fixed so that's where all the support is coming from and then the Last thing to do is add some force on it. As I said, if it is a bookshelf, the force will be distributed above the surface, which becomes, in other words, it's a pressure. So let's go ahead and add a pressure. So it says 100 kPa. Let's keep it there. We know we are just trying to get some um, value. So let's keep it there and add a phase. So this is the one that's taking all the pressure on it okay so we got our model sort of kind of ready for our analysis and now let's go ahead include our model as a mesh within the analysis select on the extrude or the object now for this workbench it will have to be one object so we cannot leave here three different parts it will have to be fusioned together to is that's what I have seen uh, and then let's go ahead and then create an it says FEM mesh from shape by NetGen I don't know what it is but I know how to work with it so let's go ahead and max size I can tone it down to say 100 millimeter so we got the mesh there if it didn't work if for some reason I would go try with the G mesh now what I want to do, I want to go back to the solver that we added to begin with. 
and then come to this point here it says solver job control click on that and i'll have to write an inp file so it was fairly quick it says write completed and then once it is completed without anything read let's go ahead and run calculate so it, it as i said it was fairly quick uh, 0.2 seconds only but it says calculix done without error that's what we are looking for. anything read here this means that we you know we we failed or like the process failed so we got what i needed let's go ahead and close it now here is the thing that i'm looking for i am looking for how much deflection it's causing on this structure with these pressures and and support system to do that i can double click on this ccx results and then it says there are multiple things that i can look at it so let's go ahead and then put it in a view where it makes more sense and i want to see the displacement of this object and right away i can see that the, disp the displacement is really small 63 micrometers so it's like really really small negligible but still i can see that from here i can see that the object is bending the way uh, i was expecting if it is a cantilever beam this end would have the most deflection whereas this close to the support there will be like no deflection at all plus it will maintain its curvature here and here it will just come down so that was my expectation i'm going to say the workbench is performing towards what we learned in the book so it's like you know, it conforms the book and like everyday practice so that's good i can also see uh any specific deflections in any direction so the direction i can see um the deflection only in the z direction and displacement magnitude is like the combined deflection and there are some ways to see the stresses as well and uh, i see i have used stat pro in the past where it said how much stress uh, is limiting for this material for example in the materials part it would say that the maximum stress for this material is say you know 100 mpa or something like that so it would say in that software and then i could come and here i could say okay uh, the stresses and it says it is 10 mpa so that's what it is causing here the maximum stress is is being caused here at this area the support uh, which which makes sense but we don't know for the allowable stress for this material so that's why i cannot get if the material will fail or not at least uh, from this workbench right now because we don't know how much the allowable stress of this material but we can see how much stress is being generated you know after the loading condition so th there is that all of we got uh, those are uh, pretty simple but it works uh, i can come here and then get the results from there very simple analysis with this i want to i want to apply this method on a little bit more complex uh, model it is pretty simple uh, sketch to draw i will also have this technical drawing in the link of this video so we got the half of the sketch uh, let's go ahead and then make an extrusion for example say 10 millimeter yeah that looks good so we got our half the truss and i want to see if i can make that a full truss just like that and as i said i'll have to make this fusion otherwise the fem workbench won't be able to handle it a moment ago you seen that i'll have to add some um, support and on this one i actually don't have i don't want to add support this whole thing only to the end so let's go ahead add a couple supports real quick
So this is my truss and is fully refined. So this is my truss that I want to do the analysis. Let's go ahead and do that one by one. Open the FEM workbench and add container analysis. Add a solver in there. Add a material. I am going again with aluminum. And then let's add some supports. So take the now in the real world the truss will have simply supported systems. Now we just fixed them. I guess that's a minor detail that we can we can um ignore for now and then let's go ahead and then add some forces in there and i want to add a continuous uniform pressure on top so let's keep them 100 kpa and add it there finally i want to add the mesh in there i'm going to keep it a 100 millimeter maximum yeah. So we got the mesh done. Now we go back to the solver and write that INP file pretty uh, quick. Then run calculate. Took now this time it took a bit more time, but not that much. I have seen this run for like no more than a minute. So there is that, and we 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 got our analysis done. Let's go ahead and then take a look if it meets our expectations. So again, uh, it's easier to see if the model worked from displacement because we get a sense of what will be the displacement on this model. So let's go ahead and select the displacement. I can see the maximum displacement is uh, 44 micrometer and it's obviously in the Z direction. And let's see how it animates. Okay, I am, I'll go hide this. Now, let's see. All right, so if it was a truss, the deflection would be a little bit different. Um, as you can see, this deflection, uh, the middle here, is the most deflection it's causing on this member because it's unsupported in that area. So that makes sense, right? And then if I take the overall structure, right? I was expecting the maximum deflection to happen overall structure here. If I took this horizontal bar at the bottom, the maximum deflection would come in the middle because it is the structure is supported on both sides. I was expecting a maximum deflection to happen here. Now again, this part is, is unsupported. So even if the maximum deflection did not come here, this area would have like the uniform maximum deflection in my expectation. But look like that's not happening. This, this animation is moving in a way this point and this point is having a bit more deflection, just a tiny little bit than compared to this point, which, which is not making sense. Uh, and also I was expecting this point, so it's moving just a little bit. Okay, that's, that's there. Okay, yeah, that's, that makes sense. But I don't know, it, it, it just looks like not, let's go to the displacement z see what's going on yeah no it's this point is not matching with my expectations and i don't know why i i really don't know why again i'm not um, as i said i don't have all the insights of this workbench or like even the afem process at all i just know that what to expect and looks like it's not meeting my expectation and i don't know why so the point of this video is 
to introduce my audiences with this FEM tool, which is really great. And if, you know, someone happens to be an expert in FEM on, on, on this uh, FreeCAD software, please give a shout out. If you know a better resource where I can actually get some explanation on this, let me know. I really uh, need to know some more about these FEM methods. And it, it's a great tool to use. Uh, and obviously, I, I need to know more than, like, you know, now I know how to turn the light switch on and off. Uh, but I need to know more details on, on this one. So uh, if you know something that I don't know, please raise a hand. If you have a resource that can give me more insights on this, let me know. Send me the link. Uh, of that video and thank you for watching i will see you in the next one